Okay, this is going to help us decide what to use and when. We're still going to be using Soka Toa for some of this. We're also going to be using the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You're going to need scrap paper, a pen, pencil, or writing utensil, some sort of calculating device. Make sure that device is set to degrees. And the flow chart, uh, which you could either have on paper or virtually. In fact, it is the next slide, and it looks like that. So make sure you have those things ready to go, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so in question number one, I'm going to start right up here at the top. What do you know? So what we know is that we're given one, two out of three side lengths. So what do we know? We know the length of two sides. Now, what do we want to find out? Uh, it's asking us for this x, which happens to be the length of the third side. So right here, what do we want to do? Uh, find length of third side. Okay. Do you know the length of the hypotenuse? So across from the 90 degree angle, no. No. So if we take a look at this flow chart, got two sides. We want to find the third side. We don't know the hypotenuse. So we're going to square the sides, add, and take the square root. So I'm going to put down here, we're going to square the sides, add, and then take the square root. Okay, so that's the basic setup for question number one. All right, so on question number one, where we actually want to uh, do the work, um, we are going to square the side, so 18 squared, 24 squared, and add that together. Go to my calculator, 18 squared plus 24 squared, I get 900. All right, then it says to uh, we add, added them, now we take the square root of that. So square root of 900 is 30. So this missing hypotenuse is 30. All right, for question two, what do you know? Well, we know one of these sides is 30, one of these sides is 12, and this is x. So we know two out of the three sides. So what do you know? A length of two sides. What do you want to do? Well, because the x is over here, we want to find the third side. Do you know the length of the hypotenuse? So across from the 90 degree angle, Yes, so this right here is the hypotenuse, and it's 30. So do we know? Yes. So let's follow this over here. We got the length of two sides. We want to find the third side. Do we know the length of the hypotenuse? Yes. So we are going to square the sides, subtract, and take the square root. So square the sides, then subtract, and then take the square root. So that's how you'd fill in this slide here. All right, so because we're trying to find a third side and we're given two and one of them is the hypotenuse, what we're going to do is square the side, so 30 squared and 12 squared. Then we're going to subtract those, so 30 squared minus 12 squared. I'm going to type into my calculator 30 squared minus 12 squared, and I get 756. Okay, then that's right there. We're going to take the square root of that. So second square root. I get something around 27.5, rounded to the nearest tenth. And that would be this missing side. If this is question three on slide seven. Uh, what do we know? Well, we have this side, which is the hypotenuse. All right, we've got this 12, which is a side, and because this x is in this angle, then we have two sides and an angle, and it's the angle that we want to find. So what do we know? We know the length of two sides. Now what do we want to do? Because the x is in that angle, we want to find that angle. So find the angle in degrees, or just find the angle. Do you know the length of the hypotenuse across from the 90-degree angle is 30? 
So yes, we do know the hypotenuse. Do we know opposite or adjacent? So from the angle we want to find is that 12, so that makes that side the opposite side, OPP. So if we follow the flow chart, we've got two sides. We want to find the measure of an angle. Do we know the length of the hypotenuse? Yes, and we know the opposite. So to find the angle, we're going to do sine, uh, and I'm going to hit control and uh, period at the same time to make a, a superscript, negative 1, then control period again to bring it back down, of the ratio 12 over 30. All right, so we've got the length of two sides. We're going to find this angle x. Uh, we know the hypotenuse is 30. We know the opposite is 12. So we could write the sine of x is equal to 12 over 30. And because we want to find the angle x, we can write the inverse of sine of 12 over 30. And then use the calculator or whatever computing device you're using. So second sine 12 over 30. And uh, let's round this to the nearest whole degree. I get 23.57, so right around 24 degrees would be this angle, 24 degrees. On slide nine, which is question four, we're given two sides. Uh, so what do we know? The length of two sides. What do we want to do? Because this x is in the degree, we want to find the degree degree of the angle. We know the length of the hypotenuse across from the 90 degree angle is 30, so it's labeled for us, so yes we do. This 12 is adjacent to the angle we want to find, so we know adjacent. So if we follow the flow chart, length of two sides, find the measure of an angle, we know the hypotenuse and we know adjacent, so we're going to use the inverse of cosine. And again, to get that superscript, I hit control and then the period, uh, and that makes it a superscript, I hit control and then that same button again to bring it back down into regular format. All right, so still on question four to do, actually do the work. There's the angle we're trying to find. We're told the hypotenuse is 30. The side that's adjacent to uh, the angle is uh, 12. So we are going to do um, the cosine of x is the ratio of adjacent 12 over hypotenuse 30. So to find the angle, we're going to do the inverse of cosine of 12. Oops, I wrote 2. 12 over 30, go to my calculator, second cosine 12 over 30, could also change 12 over 30 to a decimal and type the decimal, I'm going to just leave it like a fraction, and rounded to the nearest whole degree is about 66.42, which rounds to 66 degrees. So again, it doesn't look like it, you can't go by looks sometimes, that angle would be 66 degrees in order to have that ratio for cosine. And question five, which is slide 11, again, here's the variable x. It's in the, it's in the angle, so we're going to find the degree of that angle. Uh, we're given this side is 12 and this side is 28. So what do we know? We know the length of two sides. What do we want to find? Because the x is in that angle, we want to find the degree of the angle or the missing angle. Do you know the length of the hypotenuse? If you go across from the 90 degree angle, there's nothing there. There's no x, there's no number. So no, we don't. No, we don't know the hypotenuse. What is the side opposite of the angle we're interested in? So that's going to be 12. So that means the adjacent's 28. Right, so if we follow the flow chart, we've got the length of two sides told to us. We want to find the measure of an angle. We don't know the hypotenuse, so we're going to use the inverse of tan. So tan to the negative 1.
All right, so we're given two lengths, uh, 12 and 28. This X is here, so that we're trying to find that angle. Um, so two lengths, find the angle. Do we know the hypotenuse? No. So we're going to use inverse tan. I'm going to start by just saying the tan of that angle that we don't know is the opposite side 12 over the adjacent side 28. So to find that angle, which we're calling X, we're going to do inverse of tan 12 over 28. You could get that decimal and then type the decimal in. I'm just going to go to my calculator, do second tan of 12 over 28. And rounded to the nearest whole is about 23, because it's 23.19. So 23 degrees is going to be the measure of that missing angle. All right, question six, which is slide 13. We're given that this angle is 25 degrees. Uh, this side is labeled with an X. This side is labeled with 32. So what are we given? We're given the length of one side and the degree of one angle. So one side and one angle. Actually, I guess two, because the other one's 90 degrees, but um, I just said one. Is the hypotenuse involved? So go across from the 90 degree angle. It does have a label. It has a, a number. So is the hypotenuse involved? Yes. Right now, in order to figure out which trig function, the opposite is actually x. The adjacent is blank. So let's leave this blank. And the hypotenuse is 32. So if we're given the opposite, or you know, we're trying to find opposite, given the hypotenuse and the angle, uh, we're going to use sine. That's the trig ratio. All right, so question six, we're given that this is 25 degrees, the hypotenuse is 32, and it's the opposite side we want to find, which is x. So I would begin by saying the sine of 25, so 25 is the angle measure, is the opposite side, which we're calling x, over the hypotenuse, which is 32. I am going to make this look like a unit rate so that I can cross multiply. I'm going to do 1 times x. 1 times x is x. And then I'm going to do 32 times sine 25. Remember that this sine 25 is a decimal. We could actually get it and replace it uh, with whatever decimal that equals and then times 32. I am just going to, on my calculator, type 32 times sine 25. And this time, let's round to the nearest tenth. So I get 13.52. So it's roughly 13.5. Now that's not degrees because we're not finding an angle. We're finding the length of a side. So 13.5 inches or meters or centimeters. Okay, not degrees. Question 7, which is slide 15. Uh, again, we have this angle at 25 degrees. Uh, we're told that this side is 20. This side has a label of X. So what do we know? We know one side is 20, one side is x. We also know that one angle is 25. And obviously, one of the angles is 90 degrees, but we're kind of ignoring that for now. But these are all right triangles. Uh, is the hypotenuse involved? Well, if we go across from the 90 degree angle, that's actually what we're trying to find, is the length of the hypotenuse. So is it involved? Yes. Now, the side opposite the angle given to us, so again, not the 90 degree angle, the 25, opposite that is blank. So let's leave opposite blank. Adjacent, the one next to the angle, not the hypotenuse, is 20, and the hypotenuse is labeled as x. So which trig ratio would involve adjacent and hypotenuse? Hmm, adjacent and hypotenuse would be cosine. So we're going to be using the cosine function. So we know the length of one side is 20. We know one of the angles is 25. We also know one of the angles is 90, but 25 degrees is the one uh, we're interested in. And this side right here is labeled x. Uh, so we are going to be using cosine. So the cosine of 25 is the adjacent side, 20, 
over the hypotenuse, which is x. Okay, I'm going to make this look like a unit rate and put this over 1. Notice the variable is in the denominator. That is an indication that we're going to end up dividing. Okay, if we cross multiply, 1 times 20 is 20. x times cosine 25, I'm going to write like that. If you wanted to, you could actually calculate on your calculator cosine 25 and get a decimal and use the decimal instead of cosine 25. I am going to just divide by the cosine of 25 on both sides. That cancels these out. Then I'm going to go to my calculator. 20 divided by cosine 25. Careful how you type that in. Um, so x is, and let's round to the nearest tenth. I get 22.06, which rounds to 22.1. Uh, I've noticed some people flipping this round don't do. So no, don't do cosine 25 divided by 20. These are two different problems. This will not give you the right answer. 20 divided by cosine 25 should work. Last question, question 8 on slide 17 and slide 18. Um, <clears throat> what do you know? So if we take a look, again, here's an angle given to us, 25 degrees. Usually if there's a degree symbol, it's a good indication that we're you know, that's a, an angle. Um, one of these sides is 20. One is x. Here's the 90 degree angle symbol. All right, what do we know? Well, we're told one side and one angle. I guess, again, technically two, but one other angle other than the 90 degree angle. So one side length and one angle measure. Is the hypotenuse involved? Go across from the 90 degree angle. Okay, it's blank. There's nothing there. So no, hypotenuse not involved. So the opposite of the angle given to us, so opposite the 25 degree angle is labeled with an X. Adjacent is labeled with 20. Hypotenuse is blank. So let's just leave that blank. So the only trig ratio that involves opposite and adjacent and not the hypotenuse is tangent. So we're going to be using tangent to solve this problem. Yeah, so we're given one angle, we're given one side length is 20, we're trying to find this other one. Um, I've got, maybe this got erased, but that should be the 90 degree angle. Um, is the hypotenuse involved? No, there's nothing there, so we're going to be using tan. So tan of 25 is opposite over adjacent. So x over 20. I'm going to make this look like a unit rate, put it over 1. And then cross multiply. 1 times x is x. 20 times tan of 25. Okay, this time we're just going to multiply. Notice the variables in the numerator. Again, that's a good tip off that we're just going to multiply. Um, and this, and it doesn't matter the order. You could do tan 25 times 20 or 20 times tan of 25. And again, rounded to the nearest tenth, about 9. Point three would be the length of this side over here. And again, not degrees. Uh, these are just units for now, but they could be centimeters, inches, they're lengths, not degrees. So in general on this flowchart, uh, over here that I'm uh, highlighting in red, okay, this is where we'd use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So basically, if you're given two sides and you want to find the third side, use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, in the middle here, so this section I'm highlighting in blue, if you're given two sides and want to find the angle, okay, that's where you'd use inverse trig. So this would be the inverse trig right here. Okay, so notice for both of those, you need two out of the three side lengths. Okay, on the other side here that I'm going to highlight in purple, okay, if you're given one side length and one angle other than the 90 degree angle, this is where you'd use your trig ratios and proportions. Okay, this is where if you notice all of these end by cross multiplying. Okay, so using this flow chart, you can, it might be able to help you know what to use. I think determining what to use is the toughest part of trigonometry. So good luck. Use this as a guide, um, and maybe you could use it for future problems.